Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here at the Halifax International Security Forum in Nova Scotia, Canada, one of the world's leading gatherings of military, national security, economic, diplomatic, and civil society leaders uh, from all around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS, and it's our positive honor to talk to Air Chief Marshal Sir Stuart Peach, uh, who is the chairman of NATO's uh, military committee, uh, the senior most uh, 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 military officer advising uh, the NATO Secretary General. Sir, it's an honor uh, to talk to you. Good to see you again. Uh, absolutely. Um, at, at your panel discussion at the opening uh, session when we were talking about, you know, sort of 100 years on, uh, are we tired of winning? You know, one of the points you made was the importance of communicating with publics. You know, at the end of the day, it's no bucks, no Buck Rogers. You know, you've, you're, this is your fourth uh, four-star billet, uh, which is an extraordinary run. What do you think the communications challenge for the alliance is to make the case not just to, um, to citizens about the importance of the alliance, but also the importance of having to invest in that alliance to build capability and to build partnership. Well, the Alliance at 29 provides collective security for almost one billion people. And that's a very positive story. Of course, it's underpinned by a treaty, a treaty that stood the test of time called the Washington Treaty, which turns 70 next year. And within that sense, we have military forces from across those 29 nations who are ready, willing, and able to provide both as a nuclear alliance and conventional forces. What do you think the trick is to better communicating with publics writ large? I believe that there is, it's all too easy to make complicated things complicated. And often what we need to do in the NATO as an alliance is make complicated things simple. And the simple fact is one billion people are made safe and secure by their contribution, their commitment to the alliance. And of course it's a commitment because it involves the contribution of forces. Um, capability development and thinking about the fundamental nature of future war has been something that's preoccupied you for a very long time. Whether you were at uh, Joint Forces Command whether you were uh, Chief of Defense Staff for the United Kingdom and now at, at, uh, at NATO. There were a lot of people, and I've asked this question of John Vance, uh, the Chief of uh, Canadian Forces as well. Um, there were a lot of people in 1914 who thought they had figured out the technology and all the bits that would go into World War I and they got it horribly wrong. We're looking at a time of extraordinary technological change, but militaries sort of do things the way they do because in part they're better than some of the other alternatives. How do we need to think about what that future warfighting space fundamentally looks like? And unless we fully understand it and understand what we might be doing wrong, we're likely to get it wrong. What are the ways to think about this coming era? All forces have to be credible. One of the great strengths of the Alliance is standardization, interoperability, and a robust training and exercise process and program which certifies forces as being ready to deploy and as we say ready to employ. Well, the Alliance has 23,000 men and women, soldiers, sailors, airmen and marines deployed right now in operations and we've just deployed 50,000 to Norway. So we are a big organization which is credible but no organization such as the Alliance should stand still. We need to think about future technology, future capability, which is enabled by technology. And NATO is adapting its processes to do precisely that. Do you think that there may be bigger trade-offs in what we do to better prepare for the future? Are there things where we, you think we might be ready and necessary to take greater risk to get to a better future? Well, of course, it's okay to fail when you experiment. And so I'm very committed as the Chairman of the Military Committee to experimentation and we need to make sure those experiments for future force structures, future ideas, future ways of non-kinetic uh, activity for example and future cyber capabilities, we need to be ready to learn from each other. The strength of the Alliance is 29 different perspectives and so actually once we embrace that innovation in a military alliance such as NATO, I'm very confident that we can deliver quickly better capability for the future. And very briefly before you go, uh, Trident Juncture, largest uh, uh, military exercise the Alliance has conducted since the Cold War. Um, talk to us a little bit about the first blush takeaways, given that it was an Article 5 defense of the northern flank of the Alliance exercise. Logistics, logistics, logistics. Um, these are not new lessons, but putting tanks on railway flatbeds, moving ships across the Atlantic, moving air squadrons forward, and then 
integrating the whole as a joint force to deliver a deterrent effect. That's what we've just demonstrated. There are many, many lessons to learn, some of them very old, some of them new. And we will learn them. We have a process. We, will, uh, we are an adaptable organization, which is another part of our communication message. We change, we adapt, we modernize. Sir, thanks very much. Air Chief Marshal Sir Stuart Peach, uh, Chairman of NATO's Military Committee. Sir, thanks so much. Thank you.